In this video, I will dive deep into Runway's new state-of-the-art image-to-video model, Gen 4. The Runway team never stops surprising me, constantly pushing the boundaries of AI technology. With Gen 4, I can now control the scene, the subject, multiple subjects, the camera, and even how they interact together. The model produces natural, coherent motion and renders emotions realistically. This new model also introduces some subtle changes to prompting. I will walk you through the updated approach based on the official Gen 4 prompting guide for image-to-video generation. And make sure to stick around for a special sneak peek showcasing world consistency feature at the end of the video. Let's get started. Access to Gen 4 is rolling out on Runway. When you come to the Runway user interface, you should be able to see Gen 4 if you have access to model. If you don't have access, be patient because they are rolling out slowly. According to company's official announcement, it's going to be available only for paid plans. So if you would like to use Gen 4, you need a paid plan on Runway. I see now an aspect ratio picker where you have a variety of different aspect ratios you can choose from. After uploading your image, you can type your prompt and you are ready to generate your video. I would like to continue with emphasizing differences and improvements between Gen 3 and Gen 4. Starting with prompt understanding, in this example, I ask my subject to walk to the candle and I ask a specific focus shift from candle to her. And you will realize that with this prompt, Gen 3 was struggling. In Gen 3, my character just walks in and there isn't any focus shift in the video. But Gen 4 was able to understand what I asked for and provided me the focus shift I asked. Here I gave an action for my subject. She's making a makeup. What I want here is a clear change of focus from my subject in front to the reflection on the mirror. And here Gen 4 was successfully able to understand my prompt and provided me the exact focus shift that I asked for. Another major improvement for new model is natural motion. When camera tracks moving objects, they look much faster and motion looks fluid. In the Gen 3, everything was kind of slow. Uh, they were looking like in slow motion. In this example, steam powered train, the motion looks really natural and shadow looks dynamic together with smoke coming out from the train. Whereas in runway Gen 3, the motion looks a little bit more static and shadow doesn't look as dynamic as runway Gen 4. I think it's safe to say that additional to motion, there's also improvement with light and shadow rendering. In this example, you can see how fast this shop looks and it looks very natural, fitting to the natural speed of this car. Unfortunately, Gen 3 had many struggles. Here it confused the direction of the motion and also motion looks much more static, much slower in comparison to Gen 4. When it comes to human emotions rendering, here I wrote the prompt, she cries and then she starts laughing hysterically. You will realize that Gen 4 actually understood the prompt. First, she starts crying. And after that, emotion changes to hysteric laugh. Very good prompt understanding. In the end, there is a bit of coherence issues, particularly with hands. Whereas in Runway Gen 3, the coherence issues is much more drastic. She has three hands and we cannot observe same emotional change we saw on Gen 4 side. And of course, not everything is perfect with new model. It still struggles with this prompt, for example. A flood hits the city, filling up buildings and streets. It just doesn't do anything. And when you change it to giant tsunami hits the city or giant waves hit the city, then you get some result, but it's far from being perfect. It's just like a giant waves cover up the camera and it doesn't really look natural as it would look like in a natural disaster film. And another issue is shooting. So shooting a rifle, a pistol or simply an arrow, it still doesn't work well. You can see that motion here looks completely off. And same with the arrow here in this scene, instead of shooting the arrow, he simply decided, nope, not today. And I would like to compare Runway Gen 4 to other state-of-the-art AI video model, Clink 1.6. In this prompt, we have both subject motion and camera motion together. So it's a nice challenge. Clink gave us what we asked for in terms of prompt understanding. Here you will realize some issues with coherence of the eagle. Feet becomes like tail and general flying dynamic and natural motion of eagle looks very good for Klink. And camera follows the eagle exactly as we asked. Gen 4 understood and followed the prompt very well. Man looks frozen. In comparison to Klink, the whole video feels a little bit static. 
it's early to say which model did much better job, but I can say that Runway Gen 4 is truly a good competitor for Kling 1.6. Now let's take a look at what are the key prompting changes with new model arriving according to official guidelines published by Runway Team. Gen 4's prompting focuses entirely on motion. Since the image conveys key visual information about subjects, composition, lighting and style, your text prompt should be almost entirely focused on describing the desired motion. Gen 4 prompts should focus on what you want to happen, specifically the subject action and the camera action. Therefore, we have a new cinematic prompting structure focusing on motion. We have four layers, subject motion, camera motion, scene motion and style descriptors. You can use one of these layers or you can combine them to create a more sophisticated motion. This one is a good example because here I started with a camera motion. The handheld camera tracks two women and I continue by describing the motion of my subject. Two women, they are walking on the field and I finish my prompt with a scene motion, meaning what kind of external effect that they are creating in the sea. Movement creates waves on the water surface. Now let's take a look at some examples where we included subject motion in our prompts. By this method you can easily control your subject or multiple subjects in your videos. Here I wrote subject raises his arms. As you can realize I didn't include any camera motion in this particular example. It's very clear and Gen4 gave me exactly what I asked for. In the next example I had a bit of struggle because I wanted child to run towards the bulldozer and jump on it but I ended up with this unfortunate shot and in this example I wrote man walks past the camera while looking around and enters to a bar. In the end of the shot I got some struggle with the bar's door so you can realize some coherence issues but overall it gave me what I asked for. If you start with a simple subject motion, but add some more details like extension of scene or some follow-ups which are not actually present in the frame at the moment, it's not a problem for Gen4 because model is able to complete the shot and gave you the bar even though it's not part of the initial frame. It's also possible to control multiple subjects in the scene, but in order to do that you need to use very clear positional language. You can use directions, for example, you can say subject on the left walks forward, subjects on the right remain still. In this particular example, I wrote dinosaur on the right falls backward and chicken on the left jumps onto the cake. As you can see, model struggled a little bit. You can also use some descriptive identifiers like woman and man. In this example, I wrote man looks at sunset, the woman pulls back and I somehow got what I asked for. You can use descriptive identifiers for humans and animals as well. So here, for example, I ask model that tiger looks to the left and man takes a photo. So I got what I asked for tigers. I had some coherence issues with the man taking the photo, but it's possible to actually control two of these subjects together. And you can use positional language in the context of front and back too. In this example I wrote, woman in front crawls in fear while the ghost behind her chases her. So I'm really using like front and back in terms of describing and separating the motion of my subjects. And that was a coherence problem with third arm appearing unfortunately. So there I lost the shot and this probably requires a reroll. But it gave me what I asked for. Instead of controlling your subjects you can give this work to Gen4 and instead you can use the camera motion as well. In this example I just wrote camera zooms in to subjects face. You can of course use dolly in as well. The Gen4 is pretty good with cinematographic techniques but here just a simple zoom in and it worked quite well. And if you don't want camera to move now we have a new term. Before we were using static shot but I realized in the prompting guides the team was suggesting to use locked camera and locked camera simply means camera doesn't move simply it's a static shot. So if you don't want your camera to move you can use locked camera in your prompts. And one of the coolest things about Gen4 is you can use camera motion and subject motion together. In this example, I asked Gen4 to dolly in to the pearl she's holding as she is dancing cheerfully. So dance part is not super clear, but she looks cheerful. 
and we have a dolly into the pearl exactly as we asked for. In the next example, I used the camera motion at the beginning of my prompt. A handheld camera tracks the man playing drums and dancing in the center. And I need to say I'm really impressed with the drumming motion, especially I think man in the center. It's a good improvement, especially in comparison to much more static gentry. And here I wrote camera pulls back while man paints a painting. And you can see that it gave us the camera pullback, a very cinematic. Here I wrote, as the camera pans up, the UFO begins to levitate and shoots off at high speed. So here model, I think, did a very good job. The camera pans up and then UFO begins to levitate. I'm happy that Gen 4 was able to render both camera motion and subject motion together. And here's another great shot. Unfortunately, the camera orbit didn't really work because I wanted to test the camera orbit around the man and the camel. And Runway historically struggles with this. Generally, it's very difficult to generate this orbiting action with camera. But shot itself, I think, is pretty impressive. The walking of camel, how natural it looks like, the man's walk, and nice wind in the scene. Looks very cinematic, absolutely gorgeous. And similar to previous versions, you can upscale your footage to 4K, you can expand your video, you can use video to video and use this footage, for example, you can make an animation out of it and you can use your Gen 4 output for lip syncing or you can use Act 1 for more precise lip syncing. And I'm very happy to hear that world consistency feature coming into runway frames. Consistent characters feature is not available at the moment in runway frames, but it's coming soon. While generating images on runway frames, you can create consistent characters, consistent objects or environments. This means we will be able to upload our image. And while prompting, you can give references to these images. For example, you can ask to use a wooden toy from image one as a reference. And you can do this simply by at mentioning an element. You can simply reference to one of the characters in photo A, and then you can give reference to a location in photo B, which is from creative perspective is really flexible. I'm really looking forward for world consistency release. I think this will be a really nice add-on to my creative workflow. And hopefully this video was truly helpful for you. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials. If you want to learn more about creative intelligence, click 